Welcome traders to another Tickmill earnings season preview as we kick off results for the third quarter. Uh, today we're going to be looking at JP Morgan but before we jump into uh, today's preview we as always want to adhere to that risk disclaimer. Most pertinent to today's presentation, uh, the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine, they're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. So JP Morgan announcing today before the open of New York trading, we're looking for an earnings per share of $2.90 on revenue of $32.123 billion. I would say there is a whisper number out there that we could see a print of uh, $3.03 on the upside in terms of earnings per share. In terms of the report itself, JP Morgan's net interest margin, which is the measure of the gap between the income banks generate from credit products like loans and mortgages and the interest they pay to depositors and other credit services. It's analogous to a gross margin uh, reported by non-financial companies, which is the difference between sales and the cost of goods sold. In extremely low interest rate environments, net interest margins get squeezed as banks lower rates charged to borrowers to remain competitive, but they are reluctant to push rates they pay to creditors below the lower zero bounds. Note that JP Morgan refers to net interest margin as net yield on interest earnings assets in its financial materials. Net interest margin is especially important metric to watch. At this juncture, JP Morgan's net interest margin gradually fell in 2020 and 2021 after the Fed lowered interest rates to mitigate the shock of COVID-19, making it easier for households and businesses to borrow. The Fed's rate hikes have already started to improve the bank's net interest margin. JP Morgan's net interest margin ranged from 2.37% to 2.57% between uh, Q1 fiscal year 2018 to Q1 fiscal year 2020. It dropped to 1.99% in the uh, second quarter of fiscal year 2020 and fell uh, a further subsequent quarters, uh, reaching a low of 1.62% in the second quarter and third quarter of 2021. Since then, it's partially recovered at a slow pace in the second quarter of this year. Net interest margin rose to 1.8% in its highest in nine quarters. Analysts estimate that the net interest margin will rise again in the third quarter, reaching a potential 1.99%, but still short of uh, pre-pandemic le levels. So let's take a look at some of the trading patterns that we can uh, see statistically around earnings. Uh, the JP Morgan shares have moved lower in the immediate aftermath of earnings, 9 out of uh, 12 previous reports. On average, the stock moved down 1.7% in the first day of trading after the company reported earnings. Based on the previous 12 earnings releases, JP Morgan shares are more likely to trade lower one day after earnings for an average loss of 0.4%. Uh, and on average, the stock has moved lower 0.2% uh, one week after earnings uh, from an implied volatility perspective and what the options markets are pricing for the earnings. Um, they're looking for about a 5% move either up or down on today's release. The options market has overestimated JP Morgan stock earnings um, move 75% of the time in the last 12 quarters. Uh, the predicted move after earnings announcement has been on average a 3.6% move but in actual fact uh, the earnings moves have averaged 2.5%. And from a sentiment perspective, there has been notable buying 4,840 contracts of a bullish call expiring at the close of trade today. And options order flow in general is bullish. Investment sentiment going into the company's earnings has 35% of, uh, of analysts expecting an earnings beat. JP Morgan's share price has drifted down 1.3% post its prior earnings announcements. And using the last 12 quarters of data, the average drift between earnings announcements is 3.3% to the up or to the downside. Now, let's pull up the chart here and see if we can identify any near-term trading opportunities in terms of the technical setup. Looking at this chart, we have a, a bullish setup here on the intraday four-hour time frame. We've actually broke out yesterday from uh, this descending wedge pattern. And um, on the daily time frame, we've got a nice outside reversal candle capping one, two, three, four, five, with five prior days of range uh, yesterday. 
at, uh, at the close. And on the weekly time frame here, we can see potentially putting in a big bullish reversal pattern, lots of nice momentum divergence. So from a technical perspective, I'm, I'm constructive on the stock and I'd like to be a buyer on a, a decent report today on a, a, on a bullish open, want to engage on the long side. And um, I would be using uh, a stop of 101 on the downside. But my, my target for, uh, for JP Morgan shares at this stage would be a test up into 122. And if we can consolidate there, then I'd actually be looking for a move up into uh, the 129, 130 level as the next upside objective. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.